Greetings friends, and welcome to another tombstone build. This one is going to be for Aiken Blackburn. You're going to need a piece of styrofoam 4 inches tall, 15 by 24. You can use 2 inch styrofoam, but I wouldn't go much thinner than that. Now, now below you're going to find the file that you need to build this whole thing. And it's really straightforward, you're just going to print out these three sheets, and you're going to find that there's going to be bullets on them. They're these bullseyes right about here. Now, what you want to do is you want to cut across here to make sure that you have a nice straight line. You'll do it on the top and you'll do it on the bottom. Then, using tape, and just let me move things around here, using tape, we're going to layer them, tape them together so they all work together, and you'll end up with a specific template. Now you're going to go, once you've got the whole template assembled, you want to have it all taped together and you want to grab some pins and you want to stick it down to your styrofoam. Now, what I do to make sure that you have strength in it, you want to leave that inside line intact so it stays there so you have something to draw to and it gives the whole piece of paper shape once you've cut these big pieces out of it. Except down here, you'll see that the template doesn't exactly match the final. And what that is, is right there, that's just to give it strength. You're going to, when you're finished, you're just going to draw a line across both these just to make sure that you have that strength and you'll see how it looks after. Now, once you've got it all pinned down and everything's exactly where you want it, and before I forget, you want to line this thing up along the bottom so it's nice and flat. That is going to be your means to make sure everything's squared up. Have these two pieces touch the edge or if you don't draw a line to make sure you can line it up because you're going to need that to flip around. And you just use a pen to draw around the whole thing. It's not exactly stupid hard, but it just takes a little bit of time. Then once you're done, you'll pull all the pins using this center line here. You'll flip it over and you'll use the exact same template to draw the other side. Once you're all done, you are almost ready to go. Just make sure that you, you can see these lines and it'll go pretty quickly. Now I'll be back to talk about how everything else gets done on here, and yeah, we'll continue on. All right, we are back, and okay, I did more than I said I was going to, so I was just going to cut this out and be back. I realized that when I do my routing, it's best to have as much overlay for the base of the router to sit on. Now, this part can be done without a router. I would highly suggest against it. This is a lot of material to pick out. And if you're building quite a few of these, or if you're using all of my tutorials to build a whole bunch, you will see that I use a router a lot. Why? It makes short work of making beautiful tombstones. And it's such a great tool. You can either have a full-size router or you can have a Dremel router with a little tiny base. All will work. But if you don't have a router, I would honestly say, if you like building props, go get one. You will never regret the decision because they're just so useful when you're building things. Now, the first thing I did is I used a half inch bit to clear out the material from this whole thing. I went the whole area. You'll notice that if you use a half inch bit, according to my template, this is too big. Doesn't matter. The other thing is, is being such a big rounded bit, you'll see that I rounded some of the points to get by. You don't have to be exactly specific. If the bit that you have is a half inch, use the half inch and just compensate for as you go. This isn't an exacting science. Now, once you've got the whole thing routed, you want to get a 3 8 inch cove bit with a bearing on it. And this is really important because what the bearing does is it allows it to sit on that edge and roll around the entire area so you get a perfect level of routing all the way through. Now the one other thing which I'm going to mention, which I screwed up on, me screwing up, oh, who'd have thunk it? When you do your depth, what you want to do is you want to compare it to your cove and you want to make sure that when you do your depth that you set it enough to allow enough room for this cove to go in. And you can see that these two bits are so close to each other but they leave that little bit of a difference. If I just got a little bit dip deeper with this cut, I wouldn't have ended up with these little tiny worm lines all around. Since I'm covering this in acrylic or uh, the polymer grout, you won't see it anyways. So now, the last step we're gonna be doing is all of these edges, you're gonna take a razor blade and you're going to chamfer them and age it up a bit. 
you can do more aging if you want to. You can put some cracks in here. Avoid this area because we are going to be doing the lettering next and we don't want to have too much noise going here. Now, um, yeah, just chamfer done, blah, blah, blah. So I'll be back once I've got the lettering on. We'll talk about the lettering and how to cut it out. It's going to be actually, you know what? I'm doing this enough. I'm going to split the lettering into a tutorial, quick little tutorial video, and I'll split the grout uh, into a quick little tutorial video. I'm doing this enough that you don't need to hear me say, this is how you mix grout, and this is how you do the lettering 15 times. I'm just going to do references. So now I'll be back to talk about the lettering, and we will continue on. See you in a few. All right, we have returned, and well, the lettering and the grout is done. Now, I'm just going to quickly go over them because I'm going to reference the videos I've mentioned before. On the file below, you'll find this, which is your outline file that's sized perfectly for this tombstone. So what you do is you lightly cut it out, spray glue it on, cut it out as per the video right there. It'll tell you how to go about doing it and it saves time on doing it on this video so it doesn't end up like, you know, an hour and a half long. Now, the next part is, once you've got all the lettering done, you're going to be doing the grout. And the next one you're gonna watch is right there. If you're not familiar with how to do the grout and how to mix it for stuff like this, I'll ref be referring to that video a lot in the future because I use this stuff quite a bit and it needed to be independent. Now, once you've got to this point and you've got your nice thick coating of grout on here, you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. This is about one coat, but I did it pretty thick and you can see that it adds detail that it's a neat look. I really like how this stuff turns out and you can see it it will hide a bit of your detail, but it still retains a lot of it. Like remember those worm lines that I'd mentioned before. Anyways, I'm going to go get the tea mixture already and we're going to talk about how I go about aging these things up. Anyways, I will be back. So we were going to be going from this unfinished grout to something that looks more like this and how you do this is really up to you and how much you want to put on so the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get some tea now i usually mix about mm, eight tea bags to a liter of water but whatever you don't use you either have to refrigerate or throw away because this stuff will mold if you leave it in your bottle I don't know how i know that i just do now this is a, a dollar store pressure spray I normally did it with the squirty squirty bottle. I love this thing. You bring it up to the pressure and then you just squirt. Now, how do I get to this level here is up to you. So the first thing you see that if you look really closely here, there's multiple levels of paint here or stain. Now what I do is I usually hit the whole tombstone once with the stain just to get, you know, if you don't get it exact, that's okay. But what I do is I usually cover the whole tombstone at least once to get rid of that flat gray color. And then what you do is, this takes a while because this takes a while to dry. Then once you're done, as you can see here, once it's dry, then what you do is you go back and you spot hit it. Certain places just to emphasize some more stuff. And then you'll see how there's a drip down here. Once that second coat was done, I sprayed a whole bunch up here and let it just drip down. And what it did is it gave a very natural look. Now what's gonna happen is this is going to sit, it's going to dry, and then the tone we're gonna have is going to be more like that tone right there, rather than this tone right here. Anyways, I'm gonna let it dry. I'll be back to talk about the final step, which is going to be the black aging. I'll be back. As you can see between the last part of the video and this part of this video, winter hit. Yeah, my Halloween was this. Urgh. Anyways, the uh, you can see now that the patina on the tombstone looks really good. You keep on putting on layers of tea until you get it to where you like it. I like this where it is now. And now we're going to do the final part of the aging. Using a black wash, and you can see here that when I spray it on the ground, you're looking about a tablespoon of black paint to about a half a cup of water, a little bit more. Mix it up to the point where you feel good. And then all you do is you just catch it. You don't want to be consistent. You want to hit it all over the place. A little bit more some places than the others. Now, you want to hit the bottom more than the rest 
of the prop because that's where the majority of the aging will be. You let it dry, then you come back and you check it over and you go, oh, it looks good. And you keep on doing layers until you're happy with it. Anyways, I'll be back. We are down to the final aging and finish on this. And as you see, it's kind of got a lot of moss on it now. This is such a simple way of aging up a stone. And even being outside, this stuff is going to last forever. If someone falls off, you just glue some more back on. Anyways, the two types I used was, there we go, some Spanish moss. I think a Spanish moss, this is what I think it said. And this is at the dollar store. And then just some floral moss. I would like to have this to been a little bit darker, but they didn't have it on hand and I'm cheap. So I used what I could here and you know, there was some brown parts in there, but how do you stick this on? This is a fun little trick right here. You will see that I have some removable weather stripping sealant. This stuff is brilliant. A for sealing up drafts in your house, if you happen to have one. But other than that, the actual silicone itself comes out almost like half dried rubber. And then what you do is you just put this, stick it on, you push it down, and then you push the moss into it. This stuff is so workable and it's silicone. So it's not going to ever break down because like glue can, if it gets water on it, this won't. So once again, removable weather strip sealant, freaking amazing stuff. And even better, it dries clear. Anyways, that's it. We are done Aiken Blackburn. Yes. And I'm going to go outside. I'm going to record it and put it with the haunting story at the end here. Regardless, thanks so much for tuning in. You'll probably be seeing a few more of these throughout the year, but not as frequently as I've been making them just recently. Now, if you like the video, please like. If you are one of the many people who watch my channel and don't subscribe, hit that little subscribe button. That'd be really appreciated. Regardless, I hope everyone had a good Halloween whenever you happen to watch this or if it happens to be closer to Easter, I hope you had a good Easter or whatever holiday you happen to be near. Regardless, thanks for hanging out all and have a good one. Enjoy the story. Ah, yes, Aiken Blackburn. He was an explorer of great renown known far and wide. He lived for traveling to the ends of the earth to find lost and forbidden places no living person had seen before. For many years he returned with fantastic stories of daring adventure and intrigue, and everyone loved him for it. As time went along, the untraveled places became rarer and rarer. Then he received a book from an unknown benefactor about a lost ancient city in the continent of Antarctica. He immediately began preparation to discover if it was real and make his mark on history. When he triumphantly left for his adventure, the whole town turned out to see him off. But sadly, it was the last time anyone did see him. The expedition was lost, or so it was thought. October 31st rolled around that year, and with it came the first snow of the season. That day, Multiple people spotted Aiken walking through town, his skin blue, an expression of agony on his face. If anyone approached, he would just simply disappear. Every year after, if snow fell on Halloween, everyone knew to watch out for the spirit of Aiken Blackburn, who comes home one more time, his soul caught between worlds, searching for his eternal rest.